This instructional companion on rigid body kinetics falls under the major topic, Dynamics and Vibrations, which contains the following five chapters. Properties of solid bodies, kinematics, kinetics, which obviously this is where this one comes from, mechanisms and power transmissions, and vibrating systems. The chapter on kinetics covers the many topics shown, in particular rigid body motion. We'll be talking about Newton's laws of motion, especially his second law, and of course developing or pu pulling together the equations of rigid body motion. Kinetics, which is a uh, formal word for dynamics, a lot of folks like that much better, is the relationship between the motion, which is really the chapter on kinematics, and the forces causing that motion. So now we're going to relate things together here. Well, the place to start in mechanics is always with Newton's second law. The sum of the forces equal mass times acceleration, a vector equation. Ever forget that, and you're certainly going to get the wrong answer. But we divide things up, uh, both the kinematics chapter and this chapter, into two. Uh, one is for particles, where mass only is important. Uh, sometimes people think of particles as being electrons and protons, but a, a semi-truck can be a particle if all we're worried about is the, the mass or the weight, of, the weight of the truck, which can be com, uh, converted to, to mass. The other is uh, rigid bodies, which is what we're talking about here. Okay, where not only we have mass, but plus its distribution. Its distribution. And that is in, uh, of course, the properties of solid bodies is the first chapter uh, in this major section. And that is quantified by the mass moment of inertia. And, and when you need that, you're just going to look those up for cylinder, rod, whatever that happens to be. So when we're talking about rigid, rigid body dynamics or kinetics, uh, we need another equation besides Newton's second law. And he, he didn't really uh, use this at all or have anything to do. But it has to do with the sum of the moments like we did in statics. And that equation is the sum of the moments about some point P. We'll talk about P in a minute. In statics, it could be any fixed point. And in statics, all points were fixed. So we didn't have to worry about that. We just picked it uh, based on what made the equations easier. But here, we're going to have a little bit different situation. Sum of the moments about some point P is the I about that P, this mass moment of inertia, I for inertia. Uh, times alpha, again, a, a vector. Again, that's for three-dimensional or any kind of motion. We're going to simplify this for 2D plane motion here in a minute. But let's write down what the conditions are for P. If you want it to be a general point, uh, then the right-hand side of that equation has about 20 terms. Okay, um, And we don't want that. Most people don't do that. So uh, uh, let's look at the restrictions uh, on P to make this I alpha. Well, the first of three possibilities is the center of gravity or center of mass. Um, not many places where the gravity is, is uh, varying here, so uh, that's usually safe. And that's, that is the safe place. Uh, I'm shifting this up a little bit. Center of gravity is always applicable. Um, I have a colleague that uh, got burned so many times. Um, in fact, he's now, I think, the associate dean of research. Um, just always picks the center of gravity. Doesn't even think about the other two. Now, the second one is one that I use at times. So what is that one? Well, the second uh, point, as you might imagine, would be a fixed point, a point that you know is fixed. Uh, example of that would be if you had a slender rod or a cylinder or a block, and it was pinned here and you let go, uh, then yes, uh, that point right there is fixed. So we could use that one. Or, or the center of gravity is, again, the second choice. But the third, let's talk about the third. Well, the third point uh, comes out, and you're looking at the analysis, a point accelerating to from the center of gravity. 
and many times you do not know what that is. So um, while that's valid and you will see people do that, and in fact the, the MERM uses that in some of the problems, uses, that, uh, uses a, a point like that. They also get around it uh, for other reasons. We'll talk about that in a future instructional companion. Uh, but I say, uh, Dr. Tom says, this is too dangerous. And I've done this for 30 years, and uh, that's just not a point that I warm up to. Center of gravity is always a choice. Um, if there's a fixed point, fine, use it. Uh, but other than that, I only pick points one or two. Okay, let's talk about one of the simplest uh, rigid body uh, dynamics problem, the, the fixed axis rotation. Do that on the next page. Okay, a fixed axis rotation problem would be, uh, let's say, a, uh, a cylinder of some kind, which has an uh, inertia that you could calculate. It's a, being acted upon by a torque, a uh, torque T. And so from there, the question would be, what is the uh, angular acceleration alpha? Okay, so that would be the problem there. And another possibility that could happen, uh, I mentioned this because this is one of the examples in the MERM, is where we have sort of a belt or a resistance where there is a larger tension on one side than the other. So here is where uh, T stands for tension. So certainly we could get confused here between the T's, but uh, um, probably not too much. And I need to label uh, the axle that we've got. Uh, for this one, the axle would have to have a resistance in order to produce a, um, a differential uh, to, uh, tension between the two, and the torque would really be T larger minus T smaller uh, times R. But let's look at the free body diagrams. Okay, just doing the, the one with the applied torque, I don't need to carry along that one, uh, that would be the same, same sort of thing, is we've got axle forces, AX and AY, again using the typical uh, coordinate system we've been using, XY and then clockwise for the moment, label that little moment there. And so if we look at the uh, equations of uh, four that we're looking at here, Newton's second law along with the moment equation, here's what you would have. And of course, uh, left off one force here. If we uh, had a, an inertia that wasn't zero, you certainly have a weight uh, W. But uh, the center of, of mass is at A. So here we have since uh, AX equals AY equals zero, what we come out with is AX here is going to be uh, equal to zero, and uh, AY is going to equal to simply W. So for the fixed axis rotation, we really have a statics problem. And so if we look at the sum of the moments about point A, A is of course the logical choice because it's not only the CG, it's also a fixed point, so that's fairly straightforward. But we have the I about A, which is again that. And uh, in this particular problem, the only moment that we have here is the applied torque T. So what you end up with is a, an expression that you hear people talk about all the time, you certainly have, is that torque is equal to I alpha. Of course, I being the I about the, the center of that rotation. So torque equals I alpha, that's where that comes from, and that's the basic equation that you have for fixed axis rotation. Okay, well, let's, uh, before we get too far along, let's look at units. That comes to be a big problem sometimes. Okay, for units, and again, I'm just going to use our torque equals I alpha uh, to do this. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, for torque, that has units or foot-pounds. So let's see what the right-hand side comes out. Well, I is going to be in slug foot squared, at least that's what I recommend. And the alpha, the angular acceleration, uh, should be in radians per second squared. Well, if we pull uh, one of the uh, feet uh, from the feet squared, we could have slug foot per second squared times what's left over feet. And a slug foot per second squared is a pound and a foot. So we're OK there. OK, for the uh, SI, we've got torque's going to be in Newton meters. We should be. Our I is going to be in kilogram meter squared. And again, the angular acceleration is still going to be in radians per second squared. Again, pull one of the meters away. We've got kilogram meter per second squared 
times a meter in that kilogram meter per second squared is our Newton, so we're okay. okay. So we're okay in both systems. However, in one of the MERM examples, you have the following. Okay. In one of the MERM examples, in fact, it's the one with that differential tension on the other side of the belt, T larger minus T smaller. Uh, the I for the uh, disc is given as 1610 pound mass feet squared uh, and then uses G sub C. No, 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 no. What do we have here? Um, one slug equals 32.2 pound mass. If you want to review that, instructional companion on slug versus pound mass. So if you divide 1610 divided by 32.2, you end up with a nice simple round 50 slug foot squared. And that's what you need eyes in. If not, you're going to have a mistake that's 32.2. Okay, let's pull together the equations that we have for general 2D plane motion on the next page. Okay, so extending uh, beyond our fixed axis rotation, for 2D plane motion we've got Newton's uh, second law some of the forces uh, in X, and lot, could be lots of terms there on the left hand side, but the right hand side's got to be mass times acceleration in the X direction. Uh, if it's an SI problem, you're probably given mass in kilograms. If not, you're given weight in pounds. So that's both for X and Y. So you've got two accelerations there. Some of the moments about point P, and again, the restrictions that I'm going to put on is either the center of gravity or fixed points. So I wouldn't do anything different than that. And the uh, whatever point you pick, you need to have the I. If you that uh, slender rod, I would have needed the I about one end, not the center of gravity. And again, establish your coordinate system, x, y, and I've made that clockwise. You could make it, make it counterclockwise, but just be consistent. So now once you uh, find uh, these accelerations, ax, a, y, and alpha, if they are constant, and I can imagine that they're going to have a problem that they are not, then you can use the following uh, kinematic relationships to find time or other things. Okay, so if the accelerations are constant, the A's or the uh, alphas, for translation, we're back to translation plus rotation, I hope you see. V equals V0 plus AT, if you need the final velocity. Final position, S equals S0 plus V0T plus 1 half AT squared. So if you start from rest at a, at a measuring point, the distance is 1 half AT squared. Same thing for rotation, omega is omega 0 plus alpha T. And then theta and angular position, initial theta 0 plus omega T plus 1 half alpha T squared. So using both of them. So that kind of completes that. So now what we need to do is look at some, some different uh, actual problems, like the rolling wheel or the uh, vehicle dynamics, which we're going to do as well. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations.